Hello and welcome to this short preview video of IVAC2, the new virtual air traffic control software from Terminal 2 Solutions. IVAC2 differs from previous virtual air traffic control software in a number of ways, most visible of being the maps windows. Here's a typical map of Heathrow Airport in London. However, in IVAC2, you can look at more than one window at the same time if you want to view two airports or perhaps many more at the same time. IVAC2 FIR definitions are made up of a series of maps, each of which can be either turned on or off, optionally with text labels either visible or hidden. If we look at Manchester Airport, we can turn on or off the stand numbers, the stop bars, the taxiway labels, to suit whatever particular requirement we have. If we're a ground controller, we probably want the labels turned on. If we're a tower controller just interested in a small overview window of the airport, we probably want the labels turned off. There's great flexibility depending upon what you want to see. FIRs can create preset lists, which is a particular set of settings that are needed, typically for working a particular air traffic control position, and we'll look at presets in a different video. Notice that as we make changes to one airport, in this case Manchester, Nothing changes for the other airports. Each airport has been set up with its own separate map. That allows us to look at different details at different airports. So if you're working as a centre controller with multiple airports, you can have different windows open at different levels of detail. FIR data is created by teams of people working together to create all the data files needed for the FIR. They can define how they want their maps to be grouped together and displayed in the Maps menu. In the case of UK, they're grouped together by ICAO code of the airports, or in actual fact, just the last two letters. So Manchester's ICAO code Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. All the maps for Manchester are grouped under the Charlie Charlie button. If we want to look at Birmingham Airport, we select the ICAO code Bravo Bravo, and we can make changes as required to the stop bars and taxiway labels. In a lot of cases, this complexity is completely hidden from the end user of the software by making use of the presets. So the user might have a single show taxiways button which will show all the taxiways at all the airports, effectively turning on all the different taxiway maps. Likewise, all the taxiway maps could be hidden. That way the end user doesn't need to use the maps window, they just have a single preset option which lets them turn on or off the taxiways, regardless of which airport they're at. Up to now, all the aircraft on our maps have been on the ground. So the tags, the labels that describe the aircraft, have been fairly minimal. If the aircraft are in the air, it's up to the FIR definition team to define how they want the label to look. Just as with the maps, there's great flexibility. Here's a typical radar map. Notice it's in fast forward so we can see the aircraft come in and approach and land. The first data number under the aircraft call sign is the current altitude. The one underneath on the bottom line is the assigned altitude. It may look different in your FIR depending on how labels are defined there. We're using the menus to interact with the label, assigning the altitude, in this case the clearance to land. Notice that the labels that's on the ground, just in the grey or blue boxes, look different than labels in the air. And there's a number of different states such as selected, and where it's highlighted in blue, and tags that have been selected by other controllers and where you were assigned as the next controller. Those are tags that you may be interested in in the future. If you're a centre controller and you don't want to see the ground tags, you can turn them off very easily but they'll still be visible in the ground windows. Notice when the aircraft lands, his tag will turn into a ground tag, and if ground tags are turned off, it'll disappear. He will, however, be still a view on the surface movement radar.
Now the label's gone from the radar window, but still visible on the ground window. Maybe we want to assign him a stand. Turn on the stand numbers, see the detail of where he's going, and assign it to his label. This has given you just a very quick overview of some of the features in IVAC 2. We'll be doing a series of these videos over the next few days and weeks so that you've got a better idea of the features that you'll soon be able to use. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.